this is London Airport. It might be any day of the year. A Britannia is about to start out on a return trip half across the world, some 25,000 miles there and back. Surprisingly enough, the passengers are not, as you might have thought, business executives or millionaire globe trotters. They're crews of merchant seamen going to join their ships in the Far East. One crew, Germans, joined the Britannia at Bremen. And here's the Britannia coming into Bombay. It's an amazing comment on the changes that have overtaken the world of transport in the past half century, that a giant airliner can be chartered as a bus service for ships' crews. We're landing here for a stop of 24 hours. Bombay, where the first crew were landed, is known as the Gateway of India. But we arrive on a Sunday, and the scene bears a striking resemblance to a summer Sunday in Blackpool or Brighton. Except that in Bombay, the natives are fully clothed. The natives of Brighton or Blackpool would be practically naked. Bombay, Bangkok, and now we're high over Japan, heading for Tokyo, which is the destination of the German crew. Tokyo, the political center of Japan, whose population ranks among the largest of the world's great cities. At more than a thousand feet, its television tower is among the world's highest. And close to Tokyo, Yokohama, headquarters of a shipbuilding industry now producing the world's top tonnage, mostly in tankers. Here are Japanese workers putting the final touches to a new ship which that German crew aboard the Britannia have come to take home. Its name is San Juan Merchant. As the new crew walks on board, some figures will tell you why Yokohama has leapt into the forefront of the world's shipbuilding cities. With a gross tonnage of 31,000 and a length of more than 700 feet, the San Juan is ready for delivery only nine months after the keel was laid. Those sailors were lucky enough to arrive in Tokyo just in time to see one of the city's most picturesque festivals. Japan is not a country whose people are addicted to frivolity. And even the colorful kimono is now kept for ceremonial occasions or for relaxing at home. But here was a special opportunity to see in procession a glimpse of the old Japan of Madame Butterfly or pictures in silk embroidery. At the tower, the festivities included the ancient ceremony of bean throwing. At more than 300 shrines and temples, similar ceremonies were taking place to drive out the evils of all Tokyo. But by and large, Japan is westernized. Flashing signs vie with the displays on Broadway or Piccadilly. Restaurants advertise the cuisine of France and Italy, and even China. Nightclubs attractions include daring shows, hostesses, and beer. The return flight takes our Britannia from Tokyo to Hong Kong, to that fragment of land to the south of China that became a far-flung outpost of the British Empire just over a hundred years ago. Hong Kong in that time has grown from a few square miles inhabited by poor farmers, fishermen and pirates to a busy area with a population of over two million. It has more than doubled in the past 20 years.
colony now includes Kowloon, reached by a seven-minute ferry service across the water. And it's here that the bulk of the thriving cotton and textile industry is carried on. To Kowloon, it has brought a prosperity undreamed of a few years ago. And it's here that East meets West. The workers in the cotton industry enjoy, by Eastern standards, a high standard of living. Working conditions and living conditions in flats built specially for them have placed them among the new aristocracy of the Far East. For the home market and for export, business is booming. And indeed, exports of low-priced cotton goods made here form part of the serious threat to the cotton trade in Lancashire. here are well below the wage levels of the West. Low wages mean low prices and tough competition. As in the Western world, good factories provide their workers with good canteens. There are, however, other differences here in addition to the different food. The lunch break is 10 minutes. On shore, the appearance of Hong Kong has kept pace with the changing times and the scene afloat at first appears to be smart and modern also. But at a second glance, it is seen to differ very little from what it was a hundred years ago. The pirates have gone, but the fishermen still remain. And many families still live aboard the picturesque sampans which have been the homes of their forefathers for generations. Our Britannia has stopped at Hong Kong for a very special purpose. The Arundel Castle, which went into service on the Britain-South Africa run in 1921, has come to the end of her days. She has been sold for about a quarter of a million pounds to a Hong Kong shipbreaker for scrap. Original cost, about one million and three quarters. Today she would cost over six million to build. And the Transwell bus service of the air is here to pick up the crew that sailed in her on her last voyage to bring them back to Britain. There were storm clouds over Hong Kong as the Britannia climbed once more into the skies. An expensive way for ships' crews to travel. But it's cheap compared with the loss that would be entailed by a ship waiting in port for a crew. It was just a typical charter flight in a million pound monarch of the skies halfway round the world and back in eight days. And once again, hello London. <laughs>